All righty. I think we are live and there are people here asking already. Wow. I didn't think you guys would be here already. So I hope that you can hear me. Hello, everyone. So I'm so happy to be back here. I hope your Sunday is going great. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, I'm happy to be back because I did a live on Friday. Tell, say hello if you, um, if you can hear me. Um, I did a live on Friday and it went really well. I love taking your questions. I love just talking to you guys. I wish that I could see you on the screen or that we could speak, um, but we can't. So I'm so happy you're here. Let me know if you can, um, if you can hear me. So thank you so much for joining. Really appreciate it. We have a lot to talk about. We were talking about what happened over the weekend um, in Israel as it relates to Israel and Iran. Iran fired some 300 drones and missiles uh, toward Israel this weekend. Luckily, nobody was killed. Um, and I, 12 people were injured, but luckily nobody was killed. Participating in intercepting those missiles and drones, the United States, Britain, Jordan, France, all helping out uh, to intercept. Again, nobody died, but 12 people were injured. The, the talk for me this weekend and everybody I was speaking to said they were wondering if, if we're going to get dragged into a World War III. I don't know if we're going to go that far. Do we want to call it, a, a, you know, um, an escalated world war? I'm not sure about that. Also, um, as I said, we're going to talk about the Trump trial. That's coming up on Monday. Jury selection happens on Monday, which is going to be really, really, really interesting. We want to talk about that. Also, O.J. Simpson. Are you surprised that O.J. Simpson is getting, this story is getting so much attention? You know, O.J. Simpson died. He was suffering from prostate cancer. I didn't know about it. I don't think it was widely known. But it, it has been my timeline. I shouldn't say my timeline. My text messages have really been going crazy with people asking, do you think O.J. is guilty or innocent? What do you think? Is he guilty or innocent? Um, and, you know, I, I, obviously for the Goldman family, and for the Brown family, it's awful and you feel awful for them. But as I have been telling people, this trial wasn't really, um, at least when the public, in the public sphere, it wasn't about guilt or innocence. It was really about um, race coming off the heels of Rodney King. I just rewatched, I don't know, a really great um, 30 for 30 on ESPN. It's called OJ Made in the USA. So O.J. Simpson made in the USA so, so good and explains everything, what happened coming off of uh, Rodney King and also the um, killing of a young lady at a, at a deli in, um, in California and a couple of other related issues. But so let's discuss these things. And if you want to, we can talk about my wedding. I would love to talk about that. We've been married officially now for a week. Tim is in the room along with our three dogs, our little family. You see all of our little, our family portraits up on the mantle with some of the leftover flowers from the wedding and the reception. You see those? We had much more the other night and we had them like, oh, there's some right here too. And we just sort of, there they are. We just sort of keep them here until they die out. But I'm so happy that you can join us and I'm gonna answer some of your questions. So ask me anything, please be respectful. I'm here because I'm trying to grow a community. I'm trying to get people um, to, you know, have conversations. And I would love people who, who have differing opinions to be able to come uh, to our network and our channel and have these conversations. So thank you for joining. Let's get into the questions, shall we? So I see there are some folks from Canada here. Uh, thank you from Canada, Hooked uh, by Don. And also Kylie Karma, thank you so much. They're doing great, Don. Love your show uh, from Canada. I really appreciate that. Austin's Art says, hello, Don. Congratulations on your wedding from uh, Alexa Power. Blue Jay says, your husband going to join you on air sometime? Can you show your face or no? He's right here. He doesn't really want to show his face. Uh, he will in a little bit. Yeah, maybe. You can hear him. He says, yeah, maybe. Um, so uh, Beth H. says, I am in Orchard Park, New York, home of the Bills. I was a kid in the 1970s, um, but everybody loved OJ. was a great guy and phenomenal athlete but he went crazy over a woman. Uh, so unfortunately, yes, he did it. Everyone has their opinions about it. I think the consensus from a lot of people is that he did it, but I would urge you, I would urge you to watch that documentary if you can. It's on Netflix and I think it's on, um, it's also on ESPN, but uh, you have to pay for it. If you can find it, it's on, it's a ESPN 30 for 30 and it's called OJ Made in the USA or OJ Simpson Made in the USA. 
And as I was watching it, it kept bringing me back to that time when um, the prosecution and the defense were going at it. The prosecution really put on a weak case. They had amazing, amazing evidence, but they screwed up. The police department screwed up as well. The police department mishandled um, evidence. Um, it was, they were said to have, police were said to have planted evidence. Um, uh, Mark Furman did not help out with his racist tapes and using the N-word. And I mean, it was just a nightmare. And then when Chris Darden had O.J. Simpson try on those gloves in the courtroom, that was really the end of the story. So they did have great evidence, but it was amazing to see how the defense really screwed up. And I mean, the prosecution really screwed up in the defense. They were amazing. I mean, Johnny Cochran and all the attorneys, um, Barry Sheck, fantastic attorneys, um, and even, I uh, forget the other guy's name, um, but also really, really great attorney. Where are the wedding photos? There are some wedding photos uh, on my social media. You can look at them. I'll share a little bit more with you. Um, Donald Albert says, uh, OJ, a wet glove gets much smaller after drying. In my mind, he was guilty. Okay, great, yes, but you know what? You shouldn't have someone try on a glove that doesn't fit in a courtroom. And if you didn't know it was going to fit, as uh, one of the people in the documentary said, um, never ask a question. I think it was actually Jeffrey Tubin is gonna be on my show this week, says never as an attorney, never ask a question that you don't know the answer to. And they didn't know if that glove was gonna fit and they put it on and in front of the jury and the world, they didn't fit. And then Johnny Cochran and his team came up with that. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. And as we know, that is what happened. Uh, Don, off the subject, this is from Honey Love 6855. Don, off the subject, your skin is flawless. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I also did just uh, a little bit, just to be honest, not powder, but just a little thing to take the shine off, just a little sponge. And I wiped myself down with a paper towel. That's it. That I'm actually using as a coaster for my Coca-Cola. Hmm. So I appreciate it. Um, thank you. I love that lifestyle Brow said, I love your interview with Elon. I really appreciate that. Um, so Lee Gomes says, and then they wanted him to try on the blood-soaked and shrunken gloves over a pair of latex gloves. For God's sakes, every lawyer knows you don't ask a question unless you know the answer. I just said that, and you are completely right. I was, I, I, you know, we knew that happened, but just to watch it again. Um, Cheryl Gibson says, Don didn't, what did she say? Where did Cheryl Gibson go? Oh, Cheryl, your thing went, this thing goes way too fast. What did, oh, uh, here it is. Cheryl Gibson said, Don didn't attack Elon. I thought Don was very kind to Elon. I thought I was very kind to Elon as well. Thank you for that. I really appreciate you saying that. I thought I was very kind. I told him I was trying not to upset him, but for some reason he got upset. No attack at all. Just questions about things that he had already spoken about in other interviews or at least online. Um, someone said, <laughs> these nuts on the D-Lo says, black don't crack. Um, thank you to the crazy owl. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, Don, are you ever going to return to TV? Yes. And buyer, I'm going to return to TV. This is a return to television. It's not the traditional way linear television, but this is a return to television. And I like this format a lot better than traditional television. I have, uh, I feel like my voice can be heard here without having to worry about the hall monitors or, um, upsetting, you know, people in management because they don't like, you know, something that I said or what have you. So um, uh, I really like it. Hey, Don, I'm a Canadian. This is Mr. Bill living in Toronto. So happy that you are back with um, expert journalism. What are your dog's names? Boomer, Barkley, and Gus Gus. They are in the room and they are actually sitting right here snoozing because they just ate a big meal, a big bowl of, they, they eat Nom Nom. I probably shouldn't be saying Nom Nom without a sponsorship from them. But my dogs love it. They were eating Ollie. We switched it up. We put them on Nom Nom and they love it. It's fresh food. Well, it's frozen, but it's not like kibble or that kind of thing. Um, let's see. Al, no one really has that many questions. I know you guys love me. I would love some questions. If you want to know about um, what happened with Iran and Israel, I would love to answer that. If you want to know what's going to happen with the trial tomorrow, I'll give you a little bit of insight here. This is what's going to happen. So they're going to, what's happening tomorrow is known as voir dire, right? Where they, it's, it's really jury selection. There were 42 questions that juror in the jury questionnaire, like, you know, are you, have you ever been to a Trump rally? Uh, can you be impartial? Blah, blah, blah. 
I would also urge you, there's a really great article in the Washington Post that I was reading asking people if they could be an impartial juror uh, in the Donald Trump trial. What I found very interesting is that all of the men of color, and they weren't even trying in this article, all of the men of color had positive things to say about Donald Trump. Don't you find that interesting? Considering, you know, what Donald Trump has said about, um, you know, um, about calling NFL players sons of bitches and, you know, hey, that's my African-American over there and what he did with the um, Central Park Five or the Exonerated Five. Um, so it's very interesting to, to, to read. So there are several hundred jurors that are going to be called on Monday to potentially serve as critical, serve a critical vetting period known as voir dire. Both prosecution and defense teams will try to sniff out hidden biases um, with the help of, as I said, detailed 42 question jur jury questionnaire. It could be a grueling multi-day or even multi-week process. I was speaking with Ben Micellis over at the Midas Touch Network, and he says he thinks that it's going to be a couple of maybe a week, maybe two, that is going to happen. Okay, so let's take some questions. Uh, uh, here's what Sophia Smith says. I thought you were kind to Elon as well. People who, uh, people who are, are what they are, and he's exactly who we all think he is. I absolutely love the interview, DL. Thank you for that. Um, Jeanette Jarvis says, yes, please talk about the drones. Please talk about the drones, um, Jeanette. Where did she go? It went up. Please talk about the drones uh, last night. Drones, did they all send the bomb? Did they also send the bombs. They sent drones and missiles. Most of them were intercepted. Uh, again, there were 12 people who were injured. Nobody died. Those 12 people were taken to a hospital in southern Israel. Uh, that is as of now. That could change, though. Uh, so, Barita Day or Dia, do you think Donald Trump will get through this trial without contempt fines? That's hard to say, uh, but uh, probably not because he has a tough time keeping his mouth closed. He has a tough time uh, with authority. He has a tough time, you know, not going on his own social media site and spouting off things. He's already said things about the judge, some of the previous judges, some of their children and whatever. And he, um, I think he got sanctioned or warned by the judge. Um, thank you to Dan 90 and also to Peter. I appreciate it. So, um, so someone said, Elon sold me a car. This is Kalem Ginsburg. Elon sold me a car with missing parts. F him. Okay, whatever. Round two says, will the trial be telecast from jury selection to verdict? So there are no cameras in the courtroom, but there will be uh, reporters and journalists. Um, and I think maybe the general public may be in the courtroom. So there will be some people in the courtroom and they'll be reporting out. Um, I don't think there will be audio. Let me, let me, let me check my notes. Uh, so I don't think there's going to be audio in the courtroom as well. No. So anyway, so here's what happened. Um, what, the person who was asking me about uh, will he get through without having to pay fines? So the judge, Justice Juan Merchant, has issued a gag order barring the former president from attacking prosecutors, witness, witnesses, court staff, and the judge's own family members after a series of angry posts on Trump's Truth Social account and elsewhere. The trial won't be televised, but reporters will be able to post updates directly from the courtroom and nearby overflow rooms. So no video, no audio, but they'll be able to report in real time from the room or from the overflow room room. Um, Sam says, how do you know so much at one time? Are you always reading or do you have a team? It's a combination. So uh, just before I came on to do this, my former executive producer, Maria Spinella, I don't know if she's watching or not, but she sent me the Washington Post story and I read it. And you know, I, I read a lot of things. A lot, a lot of the times I can risk, uh, listen to them, either the um, site that I'm going on, like the Washington Post and some of their articles, you can uh, press, um, there's an audio version where you can read it, or I have my my iPhone read it. I'll just say Siri, I hope it doesn't do that, anything. Read screen, and it'll read what's on the screen and that way. So I was getting ready for this, and I was listening to the Washington Post article rather than um, reading it. Uh, okay, so let's see. So music that moves me, 
says, how much of a danger does Iran pose to the world and the United States? Um, and what will, what is the probability that the military will get involved in this? The military will take offensive actions versus posturing. Okay, so the U.S. military is already, the, the President of the United States has already said uh, in a statement that the United States was involved in intercepting. So that would, that is the United States. It's not, you know, ground combat from our military, but it is our military firing drones. Um, the President of the United States saying, uh, I forgot, I don't know where his statement is. Um, I was. I wanted to give you his direct statement, but Lloyd Austin also released a statement saying um, the United States participated in the defensive actions uh, and defense. And the Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said that the U.S. forces had intercepted missiles and attack drones launched from Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. Britain was also involved. Jordan also involved. France also involved. Thank you, D's Nuts on the DL. I appreciate it. <laughs> Your name is very interesting. But look, I can say this here. Tim is laughing. I can say this here on this platform. I can't quite say it. Well, I couldn't say it when I was on uh, traditional television, but thank you. So um, I Rising says, what's your take on Biden administration's open border policy? This floodgate has to end. So listen, I, I agree that there needs to be... Um, some, uh, our, our, our immigration policy needs updating. It needs revision. It needs to be revised. I'm not sure. I wouldn't quite call uh, the administration's policy open borders, but it is hard for us to sustain so much incoming coming in. So I think we need, um, um, we need immigration reform in the country. And immigration reform means that all parties, not just the president of the United States, listen, the president of the United States can only do so much. It is up to the, the Congress. Uh, it is up meaning, when I say the Congress, that, that means the Senate and Congress, right? Because if you say the Congress, it means both of them. You can look it up. It is up to them. And that means both Democrats and Republicans. So Republicans can talk about Joe Biden and, you know, he has an open border policy, yada, yada, yada. But then when legislation comes up to fix those policies or to address those policies, and then they are obstructionists, they are just as responsible for it, if not more, than the president of the United States and the other party who is trying to do something. And, and the Republicans are being obstructionists because, as Donald Trump has said, um, according to you know people who are his allies, he doesn't want the immigration policy fixed until after the election because he thinks it will help Joe Biden. So it is not just on President Joe Biden. I wouldn't say it's an open policy. I do say that we need reform and it is not good. Um, so let's see. Here's what. Uh, so Reese Nunn says they had a bipartisan deal shaking my head. You're right. They had a deal. And what? The folks backed out. The other side said, no, we don't want to do that. Good job, Tim. Great job moderating. He's not quite moderating. He's just sitting here listening because you know he knows I'm just going to be on here a few minutes. And guess what? We are going to go to dinner after this. Don, after CNN, uh, is there life after cable news? Or was that incident career-ending disaster? I like your reporting. I believe the second and third chances. No, I still have a career. I'm still here. I still have a show. Um, and, and I still am on television. No, it's not. This is just a, my a next chapter for me. So it's not career ending. I still have a career. I'm still here. I'm not canceled. Um, so thank you for that question. Let's see. Angie Barnett says, or Barrett, excuse me. Um, it is interesting to know that DJT is a native New Yorker, former POTUS businessman at all. You can barely count on one hand the number of New Yorkers that are rooting for him. That's actually really true. I mean, there are some people here who are rooting for him, mainly, if you want, if you want to be honest, um, mainly people in the conservative boroughs, um, like out in Long Island, not just in the boroughs, but out in Long Island, uh, out in Queens, which is a borough, Staten Island, but New York City proper. Most of the people who are supporting are people in the business community because they're really wealthy people and they love the they love the tax cuts, right? That's my dog Boomer, no Boomer, um, and because they love the tax cuts. And But most New Yorkers know Donald Trump. They've known him for decades and decades. They know what he's about. And um, they just kind of laugh at him because they thought he was kind of a jokey character. And then when he, um, when he be became the celebrity apprentice guy, people just 
thought he was an actor and kind of laughed at him. And but most people around the country, or not most people, but many people around the country actually believe the act that was on television. But that's not what Donald Trump is. Donald Trump is not a great businessman, uh, and he's not as wealthy uh, as he says. Don, what type of dogs do you have? I have three Boomer, quiet. I have three uh, poodle-ish dogs. I don't know their exact um, their ex ex exact breed because they are rescues, so we're not exactly sure. Uh, Alexa Power says, "I love your reporting. I think you. Sh I think you should do, do a full-time episode on the TLDR backstory uh, for Americans, which is the Don Lemon Show, right? Is that what you're saying?" Um, uh, the Americans for, wait a minute, you know, the backstory for Americans about the Israel-Palestine conflict, many are uneducated, unaware of the entire backstory. That is really true. There are so many people who have um, uninformed ideas uh, and takes and reactions to what's happening in Israel and Gaza. And it's so much, there's so much nuance and it's so complicated. It didn't just start. This has been going on for a long time. And I think people should uh, become more educated about it. But what I find it, it, what I find really interesting is that there is an age gap. There's a difference between what older and younger people think about the conflict. There's also a difference um, between, we were, we were having a conversation last night at dinner and they were talking about older and younger Jewish people. And the number of Jewish, the younger people, especially college age, uh, people are in their 20s and 30s have a very different perspective than their older parents. Uh, and they're actually they actually are on the side of the, the folks in Gaza more so than they are on, in Israel. And they are Jewish. So it's very interesting. Andrea Charles, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, why is it taking so long for Ukraine to join NATO? You know, um, I think, I think that Zelensky probably has a lot on his hands right now. And I think that that will happen, but we have to wait until the conflict, um, you know, settles down a little bit. Um, so anyway, why did you leave your night show for a morning show asking for a friend? That is Jay, um, Jay's on TV. Well, listen, there were myriad reasons why I left. Um, and, you know, sometimes you want to try something new. Some, um, you know, there was an opportunity to go back, but that did not work out if it didn't work out. But um, I was, it was tough working every night. I worked every night till at least midnight and uh, I didn't have much time for my family. And the, the schedule, honestly, on the morning show was much better. I got to see my family uh, a little more. Thank you for standing up for the Jewish community. That is from Storm, Storm, Storm. I appreciate it. Um, Beverly Brooks says, where is Beverly? Beverly, your thing went away. Oh my gosh. Here's the thing. Sometimes when I look at these things, they, uh, it jumps up. And so I have to go up and find it. The center from Oklahoma had come with a deal on the border, border. Republicans had the deal and Trump. Yes. So it's not just Joe Biden. It's also Donald Trump. And there were other presidents and congresses before Joe Biden. This is a shared problem for everyone in the United States and for all parties. And you have to stop blaming people saying that this is an open border policy, that this is all Joe Biden's fault. This was, this was in the making before Joe Biden became president. Now, surely it's true. The buck stops um, with Joe Biden, okay? Because he is the president of the United States. And I'm sure he would say he takes responsibility for it, but he will tell you this is a problem that wasn't just in, wasn't just him. It was, um, you know, other folks as well that contributed to the problems. Um, so Susan Carroll said in Burroughs and Queens, Don is not a great business, Don, Don meaning Donald Trump, not me, is not a great businessman and he doesn't have as much money as he thinks he, as he thinks he has. I think he doesn't have as much money as he tells you he has or he would like people to think he has, but I think he knows he doesn't have that much money. Otherwise he would not need a guarantor to uh, pay his bond, to help him pay his bond. If you are, you know, as he said, I have $11 billion, I think is the last thing that he said, surely $400 million would not be that hard for you to uh, come up with. So um, five easy questions. Hey, Don, would you grant me an interview on the podcast? Need to up my Q rating. Uh, we'll see, maybe, maybe. If you keep participating in these, uh, I, I, I may do it because I love to go on uh, shows from people from all different backgrounds. It doesn't matter how many people you, you have with you. 
Okay, so I want to thank uh, Mr. Bill. I also want to thank Zulian and also Sober Bang Bang Veteran. I appreciate it. You are awesome. Um, Project 2024 says, but I'm glad you're not Project 2025, if you know what I mean. That's pretty scary. That is where um, the Trump, at, the next Trump administration is considering. Uh, they said that what their, their goal is, is to get rid of the Department of Justice, I believe. Um, the FBI and other institutions and to outlaw a, a lot of things uh, to give, to grant the president martial law powers um, and, 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 and the Insurrection Act, I should say. Um, so it's, it's crazy. So let's see. Project 2024 says, Don, do you still believe both sides and journalism can still exist in the age of Trump? How should we, the mainstream media, cover Trump more or less? Okay, I don't believe in both sides I believe in hearing from people from all different backgrounds. But I also think in this time, as I have said many, many times, um, I'm not a Democrat, nor am I a Republican. But I do think in this day and age where we are now, the Democrats are the only, the, the Democratic Party is the only party that is keeping our democracy intact. The Republican Party has been overtaken by the MAGA folks in the party, which are, who are following a, a president who likes to delve into fascism and wants to get rid of our democracy, who attacks institutions. So I am on the side of democracy. And if that means being on the side of Democrats in this, that's what I will do. If the Democrats were endangering our democracy and the Republicans were keeping it intact, I would be on the side of the Republicans because I believe in democracy. I don't believe in both sides. And I think what the Republicans are doing now, and I don't mean all of the Republicans, the party in general, because they've been taken over by the MAGA wing and those who are in power, who are moderate Republicans, I don't see them standing up to this MAGA wing of the party. Um, so I think what they're doing is dangerous. So I don't believe in both sides of them. I'm going to point out that the Republicans are weak in the moment. Even a Republican who was on with me last week, Adam Kinzinger, called his own party members impotent and spineless because they weren't standing up to the MAGA wing of the party. They weren't standing up, they're not standing up to the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the party, to the Matt Gates of the party, to the Lauren Bobas of the party, um, to the um, Mike Johnsons of the party. So there you go. That's how I feel about it. Uh, how should we cover Donald Trump? You have to cover Donald Trump. He is the Republican nominee for president. So you have to cover him. I don't think you have to cover every, you know, tweet as we did last time or every every social media post that he posts about but when he talks about dangerous things i think you have to um you have to report on it now as far as if people say you shouldn't give this person you know a platform yada 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 i don't believe that you should give donald trump a platform for him to spew his lies live like in a town hall or in his um rallies i think that you can watch those report the news coming out of it, and fact check him. But I do believe that Donald Trump should be allowed on your network. People should interview him. He should do interviews with all different networks, whether you consider them liberal or conservative. He should be doing interviews with CNN. He should be doing interviews with MSNBC. He should be doing interviews with Fox. He should be doing interviews with the New York Times, with the Washington Post, with the Wall Street Journal. He should be doing interviews with everyone, ABC News, everyone, and not just picking and choosing safe places where people who for, with people who agree with him uh, tomorrow. Are you covering the Trump trial tomorrow? Yes, I will be covering the Trump trial tomorrow. I will also, I, I think I'm going to do, this is what I think I'm going to do. And you guys tell me if you think it's a good idea. I want to do uh, a segment every night, like we're doing now to answer your questions and take questions from you call um, today in Trump today in Trump, where we can ha hash out and hammer out ideas uh, and questions, and uh, you can tell me what you think I can tell you, what I think about what's going on. I can inform you, and you can inform me, and hopefully we have a more informed electorate. If you like that idea, let me know. Let me know what you would like to see. But I'm going to be covering a lot of that because we are in an election season. But now, now, listen, once we're out of the election, once we're past the election, there's going to be less coverage, I would hope, um, uh, of um, less political coverage and we can start covering more issues and entertainment and um, and other things that are in the zeitgeist. But this is a really, really, really important election. So we're going to be doing a lot. 
Uh, Zulan DeHardy Ryan says, many of the Republicans have relented to being MAGA, meaning they only want power and are bowing to Trump. I've lost so many friends because of him. You know what, Tulian? Uh, thank you, by the way. Uh, I have a similar situation. I've told people before, because I've always been independent-minded, and before Donald Trump came on the scene as president, um, people thought that there was a conservative black man on CNN. And they would say, oh my gosh, this guy, CNN has a black conservative. And, you know, uh, what's her name? Laura Ingram and Bill O'Reilly and uh, Glenn Beck. They would all ask, you know, ask me to come on their show or they would compliment me and blah, 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 blah. Because occasionally I would say, well, this person has a point. Or maybe you should look at what this person said because it will give you an idea of, what needs to be done or what the other side is thinking. So they would compliment me all the time. And then Donald Trump came on the scene and moved the party so far right, attacked the media and myself so much that, and, and started to call me left and, you know, lefty and liberal and, you know, people buy into the dear leader. Uh, but I have lost, I have a really good college friend who bought into the conspiracy theories and even some crazy QAnon theories. And we were really great friends and we're not friends anymore because I don't, I can't, I don't have time in my life for lies and conspiracy theories. I tried to talk to him. I tried to tell him that I've, you know, been in New York a long time and I know about Donald Trump and, you know, we were friends and what have you. And, but didn't, we, I had to let him go. I didn't, I couldn't invite him to my wedding. Mustafa, Ja, thank you. Zulin, DeHart, thank you. Heath, thank you. Uh, Vidal of Destruction, thank you. JJ, thank you. Tony, Chipek, thank you. Polar Bear, thank you. Listen, you guys are amazing. I think you should support, I'm not, I didn't even ask, but if, I think it's great that you're supporting independent media because it keeps us, uh, and it keeps us on the air, so to speak, or streaming where we can continue to have our platform. So thank you for that. Uh, also, uh, let's see. Uh, Alareza Murgasimi, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Thank you so much. It says, keep up the good work. Don't bow. Uh, Don, by the way, do you think that Paul Ryan, Mitt Romney, John Boehner types are doing enough of informing Republicans um, constituents? No, because they know better. And a lot of this stuff did start under them. It started with the Tea Party and then the MAGA people moved to really far right. So this is a long time in the making. I remember when I was at CNN and the Tea Party came about and they were, they would, that, that's when they started attacking journalists and attacking CNN. We would take all of this in, insignia off of our microphones. I didn't wear anything that said CNN, didn't wear CNN hats or paraphernalia, anything, because they were throwing things at people. They would attack people who were from, you know, the media. I don't know if they did it to MSNBC or whomever. I assume that they did, but I can only speak for, for, you know, what happened to me. And then it became even worse under Donald Trump. Here's the thing. Donald Trump did not and does not have the truth on his side. So he has to gin up outrage and vitriol about the media. So if you, if the truth is on, isn't on your side, then what, what do you do? You attack the people who are speaking the truth about you. And the people who are speaking the truth about Donald Trump was, were the media and especially CNN. And he didn't like it. So he attacked us and called us fake news and called us enemy of the people and all of the people who the, with, with the cultish behavior bought into it and started to attack us too and still do. If you know, I used to have de death threats. I had to go and do you know victim impact statements in court. I had to have security. Um, I had to you know watch where I went in and out of my home and in and out of work. It was it was unbelievable the things that we uh, went through and I hope this it doesn't happen again because we are. Um, you know, we we could ha we could we could have another Trump presidency. Um, so Geneva Jackson says, Don, you tell the truth. Fox didn't like that. It's true. But Fox was, you know. Fox is a an arm of the Republican Party and it's become an arm of the MAGA party and of Donald Trump. And listen, they realized when they were, you know, not so. Um, Trump favor, even they didn't favor Trump so much, their ratings started to decline. And so, and they, and, and their viewers started to go to OAN and what is it? Um, 
one of the other news stations that I don't really watch them, so I don't I don't know. Uh, and so they ginned up the MAGA coverage and to get their ratings uh, back up. So God bless the moderator. The comments are moving so fast. Uh, thank you. So GT Massive, thank you. GT Massive says we care and others we care and others like war. Stop your attacks on the good. Attacks on those that care. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but thank you so much. Um, Antu Villala, thank you. Uh, hi, do you still keep in touch with Chris? I haven't spoken to Chris, uh, so I have not been in touch, but I will be in touch. Let's see. Um, oh, Newsmax. Thank you, Isadora Smith, for that Newsmax. That's where they went. Ralph, thank you. I appreciate it. My mother, who is whose name is Queen, says hello. She loves you. Hi, Mom Queens. Thank you, Ralph, 1628. I really appreciate it. Um, Stephanie Risby says, your interview with Elon Musk gave off weird vibes for some reason. Just saying. Yeah, I, I understand that. I think it gave off weird vibes for some reason because, um, listen, and I respect the way that you feel. I think it gave off weird vibes because I think Elon Musk was so uncomfortable rather than just answering the questions about when I said, you tweeted about this, what do you mean? And then he became defensive. I think that's why I gave off weird vibes. Um, and I think that people who have a certain affinity and who lean a certain way and have certain biases will think that way. But for the unbiased person, who just understands that it is a journalist's job to ask tough questions, to hold truth to power, to hold people accountable, especially people who have as, that much power. Um, I don't think it came off as uh, weird vibes. I think people were stunned by the reaction. I hear it every day. I was just on the street and I saw um, one of the late night hosts, I won't say who it is, and they said, I don't, I don't understand why he got so upset because these were basic questions that he had often talked about himself. So there you go. Um, Deborah Hennessy says, I watched 20, uh, I watched a 20 minute aphasia video from Trump's speech in PA last night and I just lost your thing. Oh crap. It went up. Sorry about that. Anyway. Uh, so here's what project 2024 is back. Would you do a frequent contributor to Midas touch and the Masalis brothers? Uh, I love your interviews with them. Yes, actually, Ben called me just before this. I owe him a phone call tonight. I love working with those guys. I told the story last time. Of ben was a fan, loved my work, and he's happy that I'm now here uh, in this um, medium, uh, in, in streaming, and he wants to help out as much as possible so you can see many more collaborations, and uh, we will possibly work together soon. Lexa Power says... Don and Tim, was Anna Navarro in your wedding, at in your wedding, missing her on your show every night? Only Republican woman I trust. Anna Navarro was not in the wedding. She asked to be the flower girl. I kid you not. Um, but she was at the wedding and she had a great time. Um, Don Stone says, I love your interview with Elon. I don't understand why he was so upset about it. I agree with you. Um, Denise Hawkins says, speak on it, Don. So, uh, this is what Arian Ford says. I missed your thoughts on Blexit. Have you talked about that already? No, I have not talked about Blexit um, already. You mean the black, the, the alleged black exit from the Democratic Party? Um, listen, I think that there are there's there are always a number of people. There's always going to be a group of people who you know are not happy with a particular party. Um, and I'm not happy with everything that every party does. I don't know if there is a, so a, a, a black exit of the Democratic Party or a Blexit. I'm not sure that that is happening. I think, um, you know, I think that these polls are a snapshot in time. I think many people make up their minds once they go into the voting booth. And I think many people become engaged and informed about an election as it gets as it nears, as it gets closer. I also think just because someone says, I admire this quality about someone, I like that this person says what they mean, I like that this person is bolsterous, I like that they have a private plane, all that blah, 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 doesn't mean they're gonna vote for them. Because I would like to have a private plane, right? I would like to have all those things, but that just doesn't mean I'm gonna vote for Donald Trump. 
there are things about Donald Trump that I do think he does well. I think he's great at messaging. I think he's great at co-opting people. I actually think he's great at fooling people. He's great at snake oils. He sells great snake oil. I think he, um, as um, D.L. Hughley said, all of those, uh, many of the, the black men are supporting him. It's like a rap video where they don't realize that all his words, all of that shit goes back after the video is shot. The plane, the jewelry, the champagne, the guns or whatever, that's all fake. And the same with Donald Trump. It's fake. He's not as rich as he says he is. The plane is really old. Now tell me this. I have some wealthy friends and I know some wealthy people. Who puts their name on the side of an airplane? Come on. And he's, he's done that before he was even president. What kind of person puts their name on the side of an airplane? I, say, I can understand Delta and American and all of that, but what kind of a person? Most people, you know, most people really, the really wealthy, really rich people, quiet, incognito, they don't want people to know. Their planes don't have their names on the side of it. And they have some really, they have good planes. That's not a good plane. That's an old plane. They have the Global Express Bombardiers and the G7s and the G5s. They've got the, the fancy planes, not an old whatever plane that, you know, with their name on it. Um, so Derek, I think 11, a D-R-R-C-K 11, will the identities of the jurors be revealed to Trump during the jury selection? I hope not. No, it will not be revealed to him, hopefully, and it won't be revealed to the public. And the public, is, the, the, the jurors are free after, after the trial to speak to whomever they want and to re reveal their identities if they want to, but it's not public knowledge. Um, so let's see where I was here because there was, um, so Remy says a guy who's got a self image problem. That's, that's, that I can tell you, you're right. Yeah. I'm sure you're talking about the plane. Um, Lori says, ha, too funny. It's all, it all goes back. That's true. Isadora Smith says a narcissist. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So I agree with that. Um, <laughs> the same one who does whatever on a gold toilet. Okay. All right, guys. I see that. Um, Heath says, if you really have money, you don't talk about it. It's the truth. If you really have money, you don't talk about it. That is the first wealthy person that I have seen with their name on the side of a plane. I'm not saying it doesn't happen or people don't do it, but that is it. When I, when, so for, um, when we had to go to breaking news, often, the company, the network would provide a private plane and we would fly into and out of private airports. I have a, a couple of very generous, wealthy friends. And sometimes they allow us to fly on their plane with them. Or, you know, they'll say, hey, we're going on a vacation. Would you like guys like to join? Okay, so we'll do it. They, their names are not on their planes. We fly into like Teterboro or whatever it is when we were, when we were doing work for our debate or breaking news or whatever. And it's like, you got to get there fast. No one had their names on the side of the plane, except for, you know who. Um, Don, you can't build anything on a lie. And that is Bettina Lester. Amen, Bettina. Uh, Dina Romano says, any interest or offers to be on News Nation periodically, possibly like Geraldo is doing on there, on there these days? So here's the thing. Um, I am not seeking... It, in this moment, a traditional television job, linear television. I'm not seeking to be on any network except for my own. This is what I want to do. I'm in a position now where I can experiment for a while. And so I want to try what I, you know, what I want to do here, do something new. And then maybe in a few years, I'll do something. But I'm in a rush. I'm having a great time. So this is not for lack of, it's not for, like I'm trying to do things. I'm not. So if there was a great offer, maybe I would consider going back, but I, I'm not actively seeking and I have not actively sought since I left CNN. Um, so Sarah Leela says, say it with me, narcissist. <laughs> um, Buoyant Bear says, people who have money don't show it off everybody else. Uh, they try to keep a low profile. They don't want the extra attention. At least most don't. Thank you for that. Okay, so 
Adam Cohen says, Don roasting. I'm not roasting. I'm just telling the truth. I mean, if you guys watch me on CNN, I told the truth. I can tell the truth a lot more now. Insecure Donald Trump, according to Ms. Peel, Mrs. Peel. Yes, right on to the right on to the right on. Okay, so we've talked about Israel. We've talked um, about OJ. And we've talked about a little bit about the trial, a little bit about OJ. Do you guys want to know anything else? Do you want to talk about the wedding? Would you like to talk about the wedding? Would you like to talk about OJ? Would you like to talk about, I'll answer any question. Tim is here. Excuse me. I have a little allergies because it's spring. Have you guys seen the tulips? And by the way, the tulips in New York City, beautiful. They're everywhere. It's gorgeous. And also the, what do you call the thing? What do you call the things in Washington, D.C.? The, what's the things? I forget what you call them. The, crap, why can't I think of the name? They had them at our wedding, the things that they had at our weddings. Um, the cherry blossoms, that's it. So uh, ask us about the wedding. I've been married for a week. This is, so this is, this is, I have an engagement band that I don't have on, and this is my wedding band. How do you like that? The engagement band was different. I don't have, this is a wedding band. And it's a, can you stick your hand in the screen so they can see your wedding band? So that is Tim's, and that's mine. <laughs> and did you guys see the picture can you tim can you pull up the picture in your phone of us jumping the broom i want to put it on um so someone had a question question do you ever cover the oj trial any thoughts on the death and the estate being sued yes i covered the oj trial not as a, a correspondent but as a producer um as a production assistant as an as assignment editor yada 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 uh okay so tim and i but do you have the broom jump? The one, no, the one where we're in the air. So this is us getting ready to jump the broom. So jumping the broom, I want to do that so that the lights in the way. Jumping the broom means, um, for, so it's an African tradition. It came from the tradition of Africa, it's sweeping away, sweeping away the past, um, and it was something that um, that came from slavery. Slaves could not legally marry. And black people could not legally marry in, in, in America for the longest time. And so what they would do to celebrate their marriage was jump over the broom. And so um, I, can you get the one where we're like standing in the air, please? So they would jump over the broom and that was a symbol of their marriage, much like Jewish people have what I, a chuppah. I had, I carried for my friend Greg, who was at my wedding and his wife, Irene, I carried their chuppah in, in their um in their wedding, and so it's a tradition. But this is us. Um, look, we're in the air right here. And the, the UN ambassador said, um, now when you jump over this broom, you can't jump back. Ain't no jumping back. And there you see the cherry blossoms in the background. And we got married at um, the Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church because we wanted to get married in uh, a church. It was very important to me. We both come from religious families. I grew up Baptist. I went to a Catholic school. He grew up Catholic. Um, his family, uh, they are Catholics. They're at church mass, you know, all the time. And so we wanted to get married in a church because it's important. We also wanted it to be legal because we think that's important. So we asked the um, ambassador to the United Nations to marry us, and she um, agreed. Thankfully, she did that. We're grateful that she did it. And her homily was amazing. She discussed what love is and that everyone should be free to love who they are, who they want to love, should be free to marry who they want to marry, uh, about the importance of what we were doing, the importance of same-sex marriage and to, for the legality of that. And it's not just same-sex marriage, it's marriage. We are married. We happen to be a same-sex couple, but we are married. In the, and we got, we got married in the eyes of God and in the eyes uh, of the law. And it, we had to wait. We were, we were so ready, so happy that we were married and we wanted to like, you know, run out into the streets because there were people there waiting um, and there were even photographers there. And so we wanted to run out on the street. We had to sign our, we had to sign the marriage license and that delayed us a little bit. So um, there you go. Uh, let's see. What else do you guys want to know? You want to know anything about the wedding? Let's talk about cult. Haha. <laughs> wedding. Um, Don, have you seen the movie Civil War? And yes, what did you think? Uh, I haven't seen the movie, Jordy. Thank you. But thank you, Jordy. I have not seen it. Let's see. Don, uh, I stopped watching CNN. It's not the same. It's not the same. Look, 
I don't like to hear that, but uh, I have I the best journalists in the world work at CNN, um, and you know it's I wish them well, and you know you can do what you want to do. Newlyweds was it on Saturday? Yes, it was on Saturday, and people ask um, where is the wedding registry? We don't have a wedding registry, but I will tell you this: if you want to give us a gift, you can support independent media. That would be great if you want to do that. I'll take that. But also, if you want to support animals, uh, the Southampton Animal Shelter is where we ask people to give donations in lieu of gifts. Some people gave us gifts anyway, but um, we have three adopted dogs. And so, you know, we like to um, give money to that. Uh, so it was on Saturday. Uh, how long have you and Tim been an item? That's from Nikki Sanchez. Tim and I, here's the interesting thing. We went on our first date. Election night, 2016, the night that Donald Trump was elected. Isn't that crazy? And then we had our reception at the same place that we had our first date. So we shut the restaurant down. It was a restaurant in Midtown Manhattan. And we shut the restaurant down and we had, we had our guests come to where we had our first date so that they could have, their, they could have a date with us on our wedding night. Um, Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, are you enjoy freedom? Are you enjoying the freedom that you're allowed to having your own show? Yes, 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 I am. Um, Frederick Holland says, I love seeing you actually talk and engage with the people when the Texas Hold'em video, when is the Texas Hold'em video dropping? Um, mad that, mad what's with the rotary phone. Oh, <laughs> What's with the rotary phone in your set? It is, so when we were putting the, the desk together, I like um, older, I like having like little objects and older things. Um, and someone said, you know what, because it, because we're in a loft and it's sort of giving you a sort of loft kind of um, mid-century, 1950s kind of thing. And the desk we have is like a big wood desk. It's sort of 50s and we have the old microphone on it. And one of the... Um, Set designer said, you know, it would be great if you could get an old phone, the one that has the buttons on the bottom and then the red push button hole thing. And I went online and I found one. So it's on the desk. I don't know if I'm going to leave it there, but it's fun. And, and the interesting thing is you should watch the, sh watch the show on Monday. I think it's Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's the astrophysicist, comes on and he teaches um, the young people in my, on my staff who, who are part of my team how to use a rotary phone. And he also teaches us about why the phone is the way it is and why the rotary is the way it is and the numbers are. And it's very interesting um, what he, you know, he's not just an astrophysicist. He's really smart when it comes to um, talking about, uh, informing us about what the telephone is. So how many toasters did you get? Who said that? Where did that go? I want to know who said that. Oh, crap. I don't see it. Whoever you are, how many toasters? We didn't get any toasters, but we've gotten lots of vases. Um, we've gotten lots of vases, ice buckets. We got some really great wine glasses. But again, um, yeah, OMG, so romantic election night. Thank you, Austin Art. I know Austin's Art. I know that is sarcasm. Uh, congratulations on the marriage from Hopping Rabbit. I appreciate that. Um, I love that you asked to give donations to an animal shelter, Lydia. I hate seeing all animals neglected and especially dogs. There's so many dogs in shelters and there's so many dogs that want a home. And yes, they are a pain in the ass sometimes, um, but I love them. Uh, one of them, I woke up this morning and one of them had an accident and I was like, oh, upset. But then, you know, what are you gonna do? They have accidents and the dog is, how old is Gus Gus? Gus Gus is 15 years old. We adopted him when he was 11. And uh, his birthday was, what, two days ago, three days ago? Thursday. On three days ago, National Pet Day. So we adopted a senior dog because during the pandemic, during quarantine, the shelter called us and said, in the beginning, um, they said, we are having trouble fostering dogs. Would you guys mind fostering a dog? And I'm like, no, Tim, we don't need another dog. But next thing I know... Tim is gone and I'm like doing stuff in the house. He comes back and there's a dog and the dog actually Gus Gus hated me. Should I tell the story? Yeah. I said, I thought Gus Gus was a racist dog. 
because he did not like me. It took him a while to warm up that warm up to me. And like when delivery people would come to the door, he would bark at them, especially if they were people of color. But I don't know. I, I just think he has a thing for it. anyway. He loves me now. He's I have a scratch from him the first night, but he was in such terrible shape when we got him. His fur wasn't great. His skin wasn't great. His paws were bleeding, and he could you know he wasn't walking that great. Now he bounds up the stairs, and he is like a healthy five-year-old and he's 15 years old um let's see at least something good happened the night 45th died yes monique dean i agree with that alexa power lex i love that you're in this chat have you and tim ever dined at butter in midtown manhattan no we have not uh what's my best wedding tip okay who do who's that from do you know you don't know. Okay, so my best wedding tip is to enjoy the wedding. So during my wedding, I actually would turn around and look at people and look at the crowd because I just wanted to take in that all of my friends and all of my loved ones, my entire family was there. And um, people asked me what my favorite part of the wedding was. I think I shared this last time. Two things. One was standing. We so we were watching our guests come into the wedding. We were standing. We were hiding in the balcony in the back of the church. And so we could see people coming in and interacting with each other. And we would say, well, oh, such and such is not here yet. They're going to be late, blah, 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 blah. So that was fun to watch. And there's a picture of that. But I would have to say the favorite part of my wedding was um, the vows. The vows were very emotional. There was lots of crying. Um, I'll share a secret, not even a secret. So Tim's mother walked him down the aisle. Tim's, they went first. And the song was, um, what a wonderful world. I see trees of what a wonderful world. So that's what we went down the aisle to. So Tim's mother walked him down the aisle. And um, my mom and I stood and we waited for Tim to go down the aisle with his mom and, you know, kissed her. And he, she, they sat in the pew. And and then my mom and I started to walk down the aisle. And as soon as we came together in the back of the church, she came from one side, I came from the other. She goes, oh, my God, my baby. And she started crying. And I hugged her and it delayed going down the aisle. And I, the water works. I cried the entire ceremony because my mom started crying. She goes, I just remember you as a baby and you were a little boy and now you're getting married. And I'm so proud of you. I'm like, oh. so I went down the aisle blubbering like a baby. It was, I thought it was bad. I felt like really silly, but my friends, everyone loved it. Everyone was crying. So listen, um, we've been on here for about an hour. Um, and I thank you for that. Don's Angels episode was incredible. Will there be a part two? Of course, there would be a part two. Thank you, thousands, uh, 85. Everyone, I didn't, I didn't even ask you guys to uh, donate. And I, I love that you're doing it. I feel weird saying that, but, you know, it is what it is. And it's really important. Um, I'm so happy that you're enjoying the channel. Uh, there's much more to c come from the Lemon, the Lemon Media Network. Right, Boomer? Uh, and much more to come from the Don Lemon Show. So next week, we're going to try um, uh, Today in Trump. If you guys think I should do it, let me know. So after after all the day's happenings, right? And we'll, we'll do interviews and we'll cover it. I'm going to come on here and I'm going to do Today in Trump. And we're going to talk about it. And we're going to create this community. So I love that you guys are helping to create this community. I hope that you feel welcome. I hope that you love it. Um, and next week, so we'll have that. We have Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, gosh, who else? We have someone else on next week and I can't remember. Um, but next week you'll see that. You'll also see Ben Mycellus on. You'll see folks from the Midas Touch Network. They're going to be on as well. So um, thank you. Uh, if you donate to Independent Media, also to the Southampton Animal Shelter. And I hope you have a continue to have a great weekend. Also, let's um, next time we do this, maybe it'll be a little bit more relaxed. We'll have a couple of cocktails. Tell me, send me your favorite drinks. And we'll try to make it, okay? So have a great Sunday night and have a great week ahead. I'll see you on the next Don Lemon Show. I'll see you Neil deGrasse Tyson on Monday evening. Wednesday. Wednesday. What's on Monday? I forget I forget what's on Monday. I've shot, I shot so many shows this week. So um, I'll see you guys, okay? I love you all. Bye. See ya. Thank you. Say bye, Gus, Gus, Boomer, and Barkley. Say bye, Tim. Bye. Bye. Oh, right.
Oh, in. I'm still on. Whoops. I'm still on. There we go.